Hi everyone. Hope you're having a good day. By the time you see this, <laughs> this day that I'm talking about will be another day for you. So I like this hat, Wild Roots. Um, it's a great little place, makes shakes and stuff like that. And uh, there's something about it, you know, Wild Roots. And it brings up the whole point of where are we rooted? So in order to start off this not too long of a video, I wanted to bring up to you, um, I've had some interest in making a video about a, one of the monthly master classes and actually it was done on, I um, can't remember the exact date, very, I think it was October 30th, actually. And it was about integrating technique and music making. And uh, Don Lucas couldn't make it to that one. And he left me a very nice email. He's very, very supportive. And I really appreciate it. And uh, I said, well, you know, I don't really have any notes per se from it. But what I'm going to do is maybe I'll make some videos and say it was inspired by Don's interest. And that's what I'm doing. Thanks, Don. Um, and I'm not sure how long this particular series will be. It'll be different than the monthly master class, which will happen at the end of November. Um, and so... I'm not sure. There could be three or four of them. And I can't even tell you all when they're going to be up. Okay? And so you'll get an email. And, oh, here, here this one is happening. But what a topic. Integrating technique and music making. I could have said integrating music making and technique. So with any title, I'll look at it in different ways and see how it affects what I'm going to say. In this particular case, if someone wants to play a musical instrument, they're probably not thinking of technique first. So they get all excited, like I was, I couldn't wait to play. And then you have to start learning, well, actually you got to hold the horn a little differently. And, and instead of singing through the trombone like you were doing, literally with my vocal cords, my grandfather said, I think you need to go, you need to do something with your, your lip. And I went, as soon as I heard that little sound, I couldn't wait to try it. So... All of a sudden, that's the beginning of the ways and means to get some kind of a sound out of the trombone, let alone trying to refine the sound to something that you have more command over. And then you realize, wow, maybe I need to do something instead of just spitting into it, actually have a structure to do it. Of course, lessons can help with that. And watching other people can help with that. And then I just can't, you know, go like I'm blowing out birthday candles as the only aspect of making a sound through the trombone. I actually have to have more command over that breath. Because really, when we're dealing with breathing, right, which is an involuntary process, naturally, we're trying now to make it voluntary. Oh, wait. For example. You know, bubble blowing. It's an interesting thing, actually. You need a little bit more support in another kind of way than when you're blowing out birthday candles. You don't have to worry about 
targeting something and trying to hit it. But, but, boy, you are still blowing something out, though, aren't you? You're blowing your air out from you into this little ring. Wow, who would have thought? It's an embouchure visualizer. It's a ring blowing bubbles. And, and you put the little soap on, little bubble stuff, little soap, and you start to see it start to grow. And if you're interested, you can start to kind of get control over blowing those bubbles. Make bigger ones, smaller ones. So when we're interested in something, we start to see what it can do. We discover its properties. Kids do this all the time, don't they? So blowing up birthday candles. You know, people, what, practice it once a year? <laughs> you know what? This whole week before my birthday, I'm going to really start practicing how to blow out those candles. Well, probably a good exercise to do the older you get and someone puts, you know, 75 birthday candles on and you know, maybe your lungs aren't feeling as good anymore and you know, you might need to work up to that big day when everyone's waiting for you to blow out all those candles. Now I'm weaving other things into this because of the weighted attitude that I've seen developed a lot when starting to talk about, well, let's get our technique and our foundations together not everyone approaches it that way. But there's a lot of that. Guy, you gotta get your act together here. Really get those basics happening. Yes, basics are really good. But you know what? Some people might have to think about a little bit more like, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Remember that song? Whistle while you work. <laughs> See, I can play it on my lip, <laughs> buzzing it, but I really can't whistle. <laughs> All right, I didn't learn that technique. It doesn't like me very much, and I just didn't feel like spending a lot of time on it. So when we're interested in something, and we're drawn to it, notice we spend time with it. If you think about your practicing like that, it opens up a whole new way of looking at those times you are with your instrument. You're building a relationship. You're building attitudes with it. I didn't have um, people in my household who were brass players or professional musicians saying to me, you know, careful, that's getting out of tune. Well, that should be more precise. I didn't have anyone throwing out things like that to me. I remember once my mother said, I think I hear a leaking sound when you're playing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was really ticked. And I went and, you know, I made sure it wasn't there. She heard it and she said it. Or sometimes my grandmother said, make sure you always play with feeling. What wonderful thing to say. And so, looking at her practicing, And how to make it so it's something we want to do. And I know that people listening to this, if, it, if it's something you want to do, <clears throat> you don't always feel in the mood necessarily. When I was growing up, I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm not sure I was never not in the mood. All I wanted to do was play that thing. So it was a real need 
to express myself that way. Um, but everyone's different. Some people need something dangling over their face. I did. I knew what I wanted. I didn't care how far it was away. I wanted to be in an orchestra since age 10. Before that, I wanted to sound like J.J. Johnson. But when taking lessons, for example, you do get, oh, there's something coming up. Mine weren't every week, but, you know, there's something coming up or a school band rehearsal or youth orchestra, all these things. But just the fact of wanting to be with it so much was the glue of the persistence that continued. And that itself is a technology. I wasn't thinking about that as a technology. But when you think about it now, it is. Because that consistent, regular time deepens the threads of connection between you and what you want to do. All right? And therefore, it has an accruing aspect to it. Things build mentally, emotionally, physically. So obviously, there's technology going on. There's science going on. All right? You get what you put into it. There's economics going on. So I'm already in an integrating speaking mode right now. Do you see it? If not, that's okay. But for me, music is no different than life. And so blowing bubbles, blowing out birthday cake. Well, not blowing out the whole cake. <laughs> you want to eat some of it, I think, after someone spit out it. I don't, I don't know. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm also right now, if you want to know the technology I'm using, trying to diffuse a lot of weight in the collective consciousness of classical musicians and probably all artists of every kind about really lining up that technique and the anxiety it can create, especially in sometimes a professional circumstance too, of course, and before that. So if you start to feel yourself, you know, having dry spots in your enthusiasm, well, and you really want it, though, you know, in your heart of hearts, you really want it anyway. Keep at it. You know, say to yourself, okay, I really can't do my two hours a day. I'm going to do 10 minutes. Probably will do more than that then. So that's a technique of knowing how your brain works. Don't make this big, heavy thing in front of you. Lighten it up if you need to until you have more balance to be moving within that environment. So we're already integrating attitude. Wouldn't that be part of the technology of having a more productive practice session? I think so. I'm not saying without standards, without goal setting, but just so it's not like such a club over the head. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm very thankful I never had teachers who were like that. They probably didn't have to be with me, <laughs> tell you the truth. Um, but if we can see technique and music making 
as the same in some ways, that would be great. So if we're thinking we're trying to get an even, you know, whatever wonderful adjectives you have for the sound that you want, and we're working on that, why can't you have it with emotion? What has to be, get out that ruler, get out that, you know, little smiley face on your app that a smile for you when it's in tune and go when it's not and variations thereof. Why can't you get, you know, a little bit freer than that and still have standards and still go for something and bring them in once in a while, of course, to look and see, are you basically playing a B, B flat and <laughs> when you want to play a B flat? But what does that sound do to you? And this is where connection to other things can potentize your thought and give you really a direction. Do you want your sound to sound like someone just turning on a flashlight? Do you want it to sound like someone turning on a change, change saw? If I can say the word, chainsaw? Do you want it to sound like a Freight train going by. Want to sound like the bellowing of a bull? It's an amazing sound. It's like it'd be the greatest Mahler third. <laughs> Tie other things to it. Want it to have a density? What kind of fluid, if it was fluid? What kind of color? Why don't you just try these things? And people think, oh, you know, you've got to save that when someone already has, you know, good technique. Really? Who said? Who said? Yes, they might need to know how to and how to breathe a little bit. But then after that, even before that, if they're having problems, or issues, I should say, you don't know if you've never experimented with how powerful the mental connection and the feeling connection actually is. And this is the first stage of really integrating music and technique. In the next video, I'm going to talk about well, what is music? And I'll put out some contemplations about that. So this is the little overture for what's going to be coming up. And there'll be, you know, videos between 15 and 20 minutes. And I'll design them a certain way where you'll, if you're interested, we'll have some contemplative work to do and experimenting with your instrument. Even if you want to be in an orchestra, some of this might be very useful, and to some of you, very healing. See you on what is music and what is making music video next time.